So let's do one more example, which is the simply supported beam of length L under its own weight. So when it's under its own weight, we consider there to be a distributed load, which is constant along the length. Now really the only difference here with our previous examples is going to be the boundary conditions. So when we have the simply supported beam, you can see that at the end, when I apply the load, when the, there's weight downwards, the ends are allowed to rotate. So in our previous example, we held the boundary condition that at the end, the, the value of the deflection and its slope were zero. But here we see that we're only fixing the location, but the slope is allowed to change. So really our main difference here will be one of boundary conditions. But let's work this through example anyway and see what we get. So let's start with the shear equation. So the shear equation is pretty easy to integrate because the distributed load Q is a constant. So all we need to do is find out what our value of our reactions are, which are quite easy as this example because by symmetry, we just know that the total weight of the beam QL is gonna be split between these two reactions. So each reaction has a load of QL over two, meaning the shear has to reach a value of QL over two at this one and go to negative QL over two at this support. So when we integrate our expression for the shear, we know that it's gonna be linear. And when we integrate, we pick up one constant of integration, C1. But again, since our coordinate direction here is X going in this direction, and this value is X is equal to zero, we just simply know that at X equals to zero that the shear needs to equal the value of the support. So we have quite simply then, when we solve for our boundary conditions, that the shear is equal to that. So now let's turn to the moment equation, where we now know that the derivative of the moment equals this function that we just found for the shear. So we integrate upwards once, And we get this expression, but with a constant C2. Now here, we have to know what our boundary condition is. So we have to apply something at either, either support. So we know that the value of the moment at x equals to zero is equal to zero. So when I plug x equals to zero in our expression that we just integrated, this term goes away, this term goes away, and all that's left is C2. So that just simply means that C2 is equal to zero. So here's our expression for the moment. So now let's turn to the deflection. So now let's integrate this expression twice. Picking up two constants of integration, C3 and C4. We're gonna use the boundary conditions that the deflection at X equals zero is equal to zero and the deflection at X equals L is also equal to zero. So using the value at x equals zero is quite simple because when we plug in x equals zero, we get zero, zero, zero. So again, as in many of our previous examples, that boundary condition is going to tell us then that this value of C4 is equal to zero. The other boundary condition we have to be a little bit more careful because when we plug in x is equal to L, we get zero on the left-hand side here, but then we get which we can solve quite easily for our value of C3. Putting everything together, we now have our full functional form for the deflection as a function of X. Which we have right there. So there we go. So just as in our previous examples, we can then plot this function to get the full shape of the beam. Now, another useful measure, when we looked at the cantilever beam, we, we describe delta as being the displacement at the end. Here, if you think about it, the maximum displacement is simply gonna be in the center. So it's sometimes useful to evaluate this function at x equals L over two and call that the, the total displacement. And there's our final result. So we get an unusual factor of five over 384, but that just comes from the, all these constants of integration in evaluating x at L over two. So I think now you've seen three examples and pretty much any other example we do of beam deflections is kind of the same. 
as we get to more complicated loadings, our constants of integration can get to be quite uh, cumbersome, but the basic methodology is always the same.